Before you is a list of essentially every exponential or logarithmic identity that you will need to know in an algebra course. In this video, we are going to prove every single one of these identities one at a time. But we need to establish some starting points, such as the fundamental exponential identity that converts addition into multiplication, and the inverse of the exponential known as the natural logarithm, which essentially reverses the effect of the exponential. We will also define the exponential of a general base A in terms of the natural exponential and the natural logarithm. Let's first consider a to the x plus y. Since this is an exponential with base a, we can rewrite it as an exponential in base e. Since ln a is a constant, we can distribute it over addition. And since exponentials convert addition into multiplication, we obtain the product of e to the x ln a and e to the y ln a. However, these are the same as the expanded expressions for a to the x and a to the y. This tells us that replacing e with a still preserves the addition to multiplication property. If we consider a to the 0 plus 0, we can apply this property to obtain a to the 0 times a to the 0. Since 0 plus 0 equals to 0, the left-hand side is a to the 0, while the right-hand side is the square of a to the 0. Dividing out by a to the 0, we get 1 equals a to the 0, since the exponential is always positive. Furthermore, if instead we consider the expression a to the x minus y plus y, we can still apply the addition to multiplication property, and on the left side, the power reduces to x. Dividing out by a to the y, we obtain a to the x minus y equals a to the x over a to the y. Now consider the expression a to the x all to the y. This can be thought of as the constant a to the x raised to the power of y. This allows us to rewrite the expression in terms of the natural exponential and the natural logarithm. And furthermore, the expression inside is a to the x, which allows us to unpack it one more time in terms of the natural exponential and logarithm. Over here, the natural logarithm reverses the natural exponential. But this expression is nothing more than the unpacked version of a to the yx. We can also define reversing the exponential with base a via the logarithm base a. The logarithm base a will reverse the action of the exponential with base a. This allows us to consider the expression a to the log base a of r times s. Since exponentials and logarithms undo one another, the right-hand side simplifies to rs. On the other hand, we can write r as a to the log base a r. We can express s in a similar manner. But on the right-hand side, we have a product of exponentials, which is equal to the exponential of the sum. We can take logarithm base a on both sides. And once again, since logarithms and exponentials cancel each other out, we are left with the logarithm of a product equaling the sum of logarithms. In particular, if we were to consider a to the log base a of 1, since exponentials and logarithms cancel out, the right-hand side reduces to 1. But we have previously seen that 1 can be written as a to the 0. We can now take logarithms on both sides, and since logarithms and exponentials cancel out, we obtain that the logarithm of 1 must be 0. Furthermore, this is true of any positive base a. Consider now the expression logarithm base a of r over s times s. This is the logarithm of a product, and we know that the logarithm of a product equals the sum of two logarithms. However, by algebra, the left-hand side simplifies to the logarithm of r. Subtracting the logarithm of s on both sides, we obtain that the logarithm of a quotient is the difference of logarithms. Now consider the expression a times b all to the x. Since this is an exponential with base ab, we can rewrite it in terms of the natural exponential and the natural logarithm. The natural logarithm can be thought of as the logarithm with base e. 
but the logarithm of a product is equal to a sum of two logarithms. Logarithm base e can be thought of as the natural logarithm. We can distribute the x into the sum via some algebra, and since exponentials convert addition into multiplication, this simplifies to a product of two exponentials. Now instead, let's consider the product of a over b and b all to the x, and by algebra, this simplifies to a to the x. However, by the result we just derived, the left-hand side must simplify to a over b to the x times b to the x. Dividing up b to the x on both sides, we obtain that the power of a quotient is the quotient of two powers. Now let's consider once again the expression a to the log base a of r. Since exponentials and logarithms reverse one another, the right-hand side simplifies to r. We can raise both sides to the s, and since the power of an exponential is the exponential of a product, the left-hand side simplifies to a to the s log base a of r. Taking logarithms on both sides, since logarithms and exponentials cancel each other out, the left-hand side is s times logarithm base a of r, and the right side is logarithm base a of r to the s. And finally, let's consider the expression logarithm base a of b times logarithm base c of a. We can think of the logarithm base a of b as being brought down from a. However, since exponentials and logarithms cancel each other out, a to the log base a of b simplifies to just b. Dividing out log base c of a on both sides, we obtain the famous change of base formula. But these all hinge on the crucial fact that e to the x plus y equals e to the x times e to the y. If you want the proof behind how exponentials convert addition into multiplication, click on the video here.